cursed by the old gods in Bethany. We are five immortals doomed to roam the galaxy until we complete our thousand more tasks. After sit behind our memories ticked around, we may complete our destiny and die. We are, for now, the immortals. This is the good old bonus episode. Yay, bonus! I haven't had one of those in a while. Bonus, now, bonus, we're, bonus! We're just going to be all casual and laid back. We're so laid back that Lee didn't even show up. Yeah. She said, quote, I don't want it. That was an option? Yep. See ya! Nope, nope, get back oh, here. Okay. You're already here. Lee is pretending to drive the ship. We're just uh, doing we're our good, thing. We're good. For example, I'm Austin. I'm Adam. I'm Sarah. And I'm Pedro. Very good. Um, and we are the Immortals. And every week we typically review one of the thousand and one movies, albums, food, songs, children's books, and TV shows that you must consume before you die. Today we're just going to uh, kind of catch up for a week. Take a little bit casual. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's start it off with um, some stuff that a couple of us have missed. Mm-hmm. We had, um, many episodes ago, we reviewed the war film, The Battle of Algiers, you were held captive by Marion or some, something. Yeah, something, something bad. So, happened. Sarah, what did you, you just recently caught up with the movie? What did you think? Um, I loved it. As soon as I started watching it, I realized that I'd seen it before um, in French class in high school because that's sort of when you watch such a thing. Um, you know, for those who maybe didn't listen to the first review, it's a movie about the uh, Algerian resistance in Algiers in um, or the Algerian independence movement. Uh, over the period of a, of a couple years, um, follows a couple of sort of major revolutionaries. Um, I realized that I'd seen it before because of the phenomenal soundtrack. There's this, there's this that they do um, in the background of almost everything, sort of especially the tense scenes. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, I have seen this movie before. Um, you know, it was like this very sort of emotionally connected thing. It's a great movie. Um, it's interesting and stressful, and you have a very good sense of both sides of the story. Um, I think that the appeal of the Algerian independence fighters is obvious, um, but I really love, too, the scene with one of the French generals who's talking to reporters and basically says to them... You know, and is trying to justify torture, and says to them, "Do you think that France should still be in Algeria?" And all of the reporters are like, "Yes, we all think that." And then he's like, "Well, then, like, what do you, what do you want from me? Like, you have to accept the consequences." And it's, it's just, it's a very, there are not um, caricatured villains. There are villains, but everybody is, everybody feels very real. Um, it flies by uh, in terms of. It's yeah, it's great. Um, I really, really liked it. My only criticism is that I didn't feel like I got to know the characters very well. They were all players in this larger sort of um, political story that I was really, really interested in. But you know, I certainly struggled to remember people's names. But I also just like I didn't get a sense of who they were as people or why they individually were in this fight, and that would have been made it like even better. So yeah, I would give it a I would give it four point two hinges. That was one of Adam's only five hinges reviews. Wow, mm-hmm. I've done some fives. He has. Uh, we looked up. Is your only movie you gave a five? Huh. That would make sense. So it is the RB Curly Prize of movies. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right, so you're gonna fix the ship? Yeah, I gotta fix the ship. The ship's never working. Nice. Never works. Hey, if you want, right, it works. <laughs> We're in it in the space. Yep. Uh, if you want to hear the rest of our review, we reviewed that on episode 86. Uh, next thing we're going to go catch up on is uh, the children's book, The Snow Spider. Uh, we reviewed it last week, except um, we, we did it. It took us 93 episodes to have corrupt audio, and it was just that segment. Yes. Actually, it was, just a segment. it was the first half of the segment that I could not edit around. So, yep. So, Adam... You want, to, you want to talk about the snow spider again? <laughs> For the first time? Are you Googling what happened in that book right now? I'm Googling the author because I forgot <laughs> the author. It's uh, Jenny Nimmo there is the author of that book. There we go. Um, and, yeah, I, to- I totally <laughs> forgot we were doing this. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, we'll do this. Um, yeah, so the snow spider. Okay. The Snow Spider is part of the Magician sh- series, and it is about a boy named 
probably Gwen. We're going to say Gwen. Mm-hmm. It could be Gwen. Um, the book might still be in the ship. One second. <laughs> sure, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll catch up. I'll catch the listeners up. It's about uh, that boy who his grandmother essentially comes to him one day saying that, hey, you're a magician and you need to fulfill your destiny. Found it. Found the book. Um, You need to fulfill your destiny because it's like every seven generations in this family, there is a magician and he is the one. Um, Backstory is that one night his sister went to look for a goat and never returned. And he still lives with his mother and father, father kind of blames him for the daughter's disappearance and uh, and then it's about him kind of becoming a magician and using these tokens that his uh, or, or like talismans I guess is it actually him becoming a magician because like if he actually become a magician this is as if like remember in Harry Potter where he just like bought his books yeah that's what happens here like yeah. he doesn't actually like learn anything useful or like would be a magician by the end or would even be able to pass a class on anything he just kind of has some things that he gives to the wind and stupid stuff happens right and uh, eventually he says something like I'm a magician now and it was a bold statement I didn't believe him Mm -mm. it's yeah so it's I, I Whenever I read these books, sometimes, and I'm, I'm flabbergasted about why they're on the list, I sometimes look at other people's reviews and they said that, for the most part, they said that the family uh, drama was good, but the, magi- the magic part of the story needed work, and I agree that the magic needed work, but I also wasn't very compelled by the family the drama either. No, because this so this book I think it has the misfortune of intending to be a trilogy because nothing happens to this first book mm-hmm. and nothing may be compelled to read the next two, even though they were easily available to read. The grandma is just a plot device. Um, there's no character reason why she's so obsessed with magic. She is just an exposition device for everything about magic. And except it's the the seventh one is is magical. So she's in the middle. So like it's she knew that her great grandmother conveniently for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. So that inspired her to learn about magic and then never had magic in her life ever. And to her grand, and it's I don't buy it. And then the parents had the problem with the rest of this world. And that this isn't a kind of like isolated magical tale, like uh, the new policeman we read many yes. books ago. Half this book is filler. People going, no, that's not real. Whereas we as a reader know it's real, it's just annoying that the parents and like everyone in school is doubting the most basic thing, and it's just boring, especially when the main character is so bland, and that he like is willing to like make a deal with the devil because his mom killed a spider. Yeah, his mom. <laughs> his mom found this. The first thing that the kid gets is like a snow, a, a snow-colored spider who can spin these magical webs that are essentially like a TV. And so his mother sees the spider and throws it down the drain, and it's in the sump pump. And he uses this dark horse figurine to get it back, which his grandmother has told him not to use. And he uses it, and then his grandmother is like. Look, the spider was gonna come back. You didn't need to use it. It's a that. magical spider. Yeah, it's a magical spider. It's gonna come to you as magically... It's gonna return to you as magically as it came to you in the first place. I looked at the descriptions of the next two books, and they still seem really boring. But I love that these book series really thinks that like the spider's the best character. Yeah. And they really want you to like, love the spider. Yeah. And that's really dumb. Yeah, it was kind of the... like the Part of the climax of the story was losing this spider and... Uh, I think we were really supposed to feel for it, and like, that was crazy. I did a little man. bit, but that's where they had like bigger implications. Like, oh, the magic needs this. no, it's just a spider. Yeah, and then it's after that, which is like three fourths towards the end of the book, where we actually figure out that whatever this dark horse is related to is like the bad guy and we learn who the bad guy of the story is at the very end yeah and then he never confronts him at all 
Because I'm yeah. sure he does in the third book. Like, you don't save shit like that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you need a confrontation as soon as possible. You ready for hinges? I think so. Yeah, it's, let's see how you did from what you actually recorded last week. I think I did 1.7. You did, and I gave 1.5. Yeah, I'll stick with that. All right, that's the snow spider. It's not very good. So that was episode 93, catch up, and back on episode 89, Pedro was not with us because of some... Oh, right, I threw you outside the ship. Yeah. Okay, but uh, while you're out there among the stars, did you able to have a chance to think about Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi? Yeah. What were they? Meh. <laughs> yeah? Kind of. Okay, so <laughs> for those of you who don't know, this is uh, Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, part 6 of the film saga, part 3 of the... Skywalker Vader saga thing. It's you know written by George Lucas and Lawrence Kasdan, who's awesome because of Indiana Jones. It's directed by someone who's not David Lynch, so I forgot who he is. Me too. Yeah, uh, David Lynch should have made this film because it would have been not as dumb. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I feel bad because I no. love. I'm going to start saying I do love this film. It's well, a Star Wars film. We, it's we, we were a bit harsher on it in our review in episode 89, but also remember around this time Lynch made Dune, which is dumb. That's fine. So I, I don't know if he would like saved it. This, this wasn't going to be Twin Peaks Star Wars edition <laughs> or st- strike that reverse it. I mean, it's uh, you know. Now I watched the what 2015 cut 20. Was it your first time watching it? No, no. I, I think I'd even seen it on VHS. It's just been so long that I don't... At this point, I don't know what's real and what's not. What's original and what isn't. What's well, so I mean? Like, A I, lot of bits I kind of thought I could tell, but... It's just... A lot of the story doesn't make sense. They do things for no reason. Stupid things. Luke technically doesn't do anything. Like... It's fun, but... Really... I didn't realize how dumb every little piece was that made up this film. But then it comes together, and it's still kind of dumb, but eh, it's Star Wars. It's cool. Good guys win. Lightsaber fight. Aerial space battle. Yeah. So, Peter, you, on the record, like Harrison Ford more than most of us. Yes. Um, All of you. I think he's bad in this. I mean... I think this is less of, like, he's not caring. Yeah. When he cares, he acts very well. But sure. But he doesn't care. It shows on screen, I believe. Yeah. I feel like that's Han's attitude. At this point, he's tired of this. He doesn't care. He never recovered from being then. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was blind for the first, like, third of the movie. He played the first scene. <laughs> he, got, he was fine. Yeah. I choose to believe he was still getting over carbonite sickness. Or hibernation sickness. Sure. But if he never did get over it, maybe that's why he was dumb and got. No, never mind. Spoilers. About to spoil the Force Awakens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I don't know. It's fine. I'm actually kind of bummed out at watching it again I, so recently. I, I was bummed when I rewatched it before Force Awakens because I was like, Star Wars, yes. Empire, yes. Return. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, right? Then it was Phantom. Oh. <laughs> Attack. What the? <laughs> Revenge. Not guys. So I kind of... W- then I watched... Oh, I watched the Christmas special, too. Is so, it a Christmas special? You ever heard of the Star Wars uh, Christmas special? No. Yeah, uh, it is... George Lucas made a Christmas special for TV, and it's so horrible that he has tried to destroy every copy that exists. Huh. You can watch pirate versions. Everyone's in it. It is worse than all the prequels combined. That's... Funny. I'll give you a copy. I want to watch it. Yeah, it's yes. terrible. Um, so, I, yeah, I went into Force Awakens much like I did when I went in to see The Dark Knight, which is, after rewatching most of the movies, I go, it's not a good franchise, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have low expectations. And then I had a great time with Force Awakens. So, yeah. there's now three good Star Wars films. Yep. And one year later, there are still three good Star Wars films, kind of like Rogue One. I think you're wrong. You are wrong. Rogue One was uh, fun. It was fine. That's fine. <laughs> this movie is sub fine, not bad. What would you say in a one to five hint rating? Well, if I had to give it a rating out of 
from one to five. Or zero to five. Or I guess I could give it a zero, but I'm not going to give it a zero. That'd be weird. Uh, oh, God. I mean, I don't think it can. It deserves lower than a three. I'll just give it a three. It's fine. That's fine. If you want to hear a longer review for that, you go to episode 89. And now, unless you guys have some more that you guys want to say, I'm just going to quickly go through some TV shows I've <laughs> keep watching since then. You guys have more to, you have wanted to review in this post episode? I don't think, I don't I think, I think I've done, done anything. anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a, a little bit of a rapid fire round. Um, back in episode five, we reviewed the I reviewed the um, <laughs> the, the European crime show Arne Dahl. I did watch season two of that. Uh, higher production values were a nice addition. Um, we had less characterization, which uh, I thought was a bit of a bummer. But again, some of the cases were fine. I'm gonna stick with my three point five rating for the whole series. Uh, what else we got here? Nope. Oh, I've started season eight of twenty four. Last season I watched, and it is a garbage season. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? This is the one I watched four episodes this so the far. One in New York? Uh, no, he's in LA right now. And we know he's somewhere. It doesn't matter uh, because the <laughs> I guess the president of Islam is in DC, and they're going to make a peace agreement for all the Middle East. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, the guy from The Shield is saying there's an assassination attempt against this guy. And the president doesn't want to tell him because she thinks it might stop the peace deal. Because, you know, this guy's never had to deal with violence in the Middle East before. And it's just insane. It's just, and it's made no sense so far. Uh, Agent Love Interest, who was out of the business for like a couple years, is now going to rejoin a Mexican undercover group that night. Um,. Yeah, it's, it's been just straight up gibberish. <laughs> There's another new head of CTU guy who, once again, won't listen to anybody. <laughs> so, oh, there's... And Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica is has a secret identity and also has an abusive boyfriend who is Teddy Jr. from Rectify who keeps trying to, like, visit her at work, a.k.a. the exact plotline of Chloe a few seasons ago. So, this is multiple episodes where female CTU agents... Having abusive boyfriends try to harass them at work for a really busy day. Have you seen James Cromwell on 24 yet? Yes. Okay. That was a season two prior. Okay. Isn't he uh, Mr. or Jack Bauer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to kind of get a reference. This is a season I hadn't seen yet. It was like the last proper season on Fox, but I did watch the um, the shorter one that I liked actually a lot more. Um, Living of the day. So oh, I'm yeah. the only one that needs to finish, right? Yeah, well, I still have 20 more to watch, okay. but... Um, so there you go. Um, I'm now on season ten of Cheers. We reviewed episode eleven um, when we last left off. I was in the middle of six, and I was saying that was kind of a weaker season because I didn't know how to deal with with uh, Rebecca. Now I think she's a great addition to the whole group because they kind of found her uh, great humor and how bad she is romantically, and uh, they have a lot of great new characters kind of sneak their way in. And uh, Lilith is, I think, one of the funniest characters now on the show. So I only have a season and a half left. I'm going to be sad to see it go. I know Lee, who, uh, again, quote, didn't want to be on this episode, um, just finished the show, and she adores it. So there's that. What else is there on here? Episode 13 reviewed Gotham. Uh, Season 3 was garbage. (laughs) Season 4 came out (laughs) last week, and I'm going to watch it. (laughs) Uh, Bruce Wayne is actually Batman now, right? I know, because they are out of ideas. Wait, how old is he? 14. Perfect. <laughs> and also still the worst actor on the show, so thank God they gave him a clone last season. Yes. So we got to act twice as much. Show's garbage. Um, mm-hmm. Still watching Parenthood. Parenthood Deuce Wayne. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still on season four, Ray Donovan. That show's still garbage. Oh, that show has managed to have a breast cancer subplot in season four. That is all about how um, Ray Donovan likes breasts. <laughs> okay. It, the whole uh, the whole episode is all about how his wife didn't want to have surgery because Ray might not like them as, as much. And then he meets a woman at a museum event who strips for him, who has scarred breasts, and he learns that sometimes breasts with scars are beautiful. So he encourages his wife to have breast cancer surgery because she has breast cancer. What does he do again? What's his job? Things... I don't know. I keep seeing trailers for him now. He's like watching he's Peaks. like a fixer for everything, and it doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's a garbage show. Um, Scandal had a pretty good last season. Um, 
<laughs> I'm just going through this quickly. I watched all those. I watched all those. I watched all those. Did you have you changed your rating on any of these yet? No, not yet. There's a couple that I, I want to, but I didn't watch. I want them to kind of finish first. Hmm. Agents of Shield, I thought, had a really interesting last season at times, but didn't fully know how to pull it off. It tried to do like a dystopian, like what if world where like Nazis kind of ran everything, and that kind of made well, sense. A lot of people have those. Yeah, they do. But I thought that uh, Ghost Rider was pretty boring for the whole thing. Yeah, he was on it. Uh, I still watch more LA Law, but I want to. Um, Outlander season three just started, and it has been great so far. Just finished reading the book today, and uh, really liked it. And this is going to be a really good season. And uh, seasons one or two were fantastic. So good stuff all around. I have not watched more of the X Files, but they are making another season of it. Yes. <laughs> so they're filming that right now. We have uh, more things that I have to apparently keep talking while I look through all of this. There will be more rest development. Good. Um, Chris, somebody else talk. I can't, I can't scroll. Well, what do I talk about? <laughs> I don't know. Adam, I'm, how's your day? No, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> um, let's talk about... America's Got Talent. I watched season 11. <laughs> uh, it was not as good as season 10. Um, partly because Tyra Banks is not a good enough host as Nick Cannon. And also, um, you can tell that no one in like the Think Peace circle watches this show because I thought their dancing Trump was horrible. Uh, old guy dresses Trump doing an impression, dancing to pop songs. Um, I think it's as bad as Jimmy Fallon tussling his hair and all that kind of normalization of a racist monster. Um, so, yeah. I had an issue with that... Uh, not especially the whole like you watch like Mel Beagle like I don't think this is funny and then like next episode I have been told I think this is funny <laughs> like it, it, it felt awkward I need to catch up on Call the Midwife still that season just ended and was added to Netflix um Red Shoe Diaries is still hilarious um Borgen is fantastic I can't remember if I finished it by then but it is a wonderful brilliant show uh I've not watched any more Smallville because it's garbage. <laughs> oh, I've now finished uh, half of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. It is still one of the best shows that I have covered here. There's kind of two seasons of this year-long show. And oh, yeah. this season one, they, they took a break for a few months then went back to a daily schedule, which is absurd. That finale, which is like the most talked about episode of the show, is so perfect and so chilling. That even though I knew the one line thing was going to happen, it like shocked me to my core and I felt like this and it was building so much because you're watching the mental breakdown of this woman who is mentally ill and like no one understands it and the more I kept getting closer to episode 133 of this it was horrifying and then it was brilliant I'm now also taking a couple months off watching it but I'm going to watch the next 200 episodes soon uh nice Jefferson's still great um Twin Peaks, we're going to do a bonus episode on that one. That's not this, because Pedro, you finished season three. I did. I finished season three. Sarah's almost done. Have you still not watched any of it, Adam? Correct. Um, maybe we'll wait until so you... Like, I, I, I now love it even more than I did. So we have a lot to talk about. We'll do a spoilery uh, what the fuck. Deep dive. About that. Um, I think that's that for me. There we go. There's all my catch-ups on uh, a lot of shows. Nice. I still have, uh, I have to finish all those. I did. Good. Oh, I mean, I've been watching a lot more Buffy. I'm almost done with that. What do you think about that? Uh, good, so far. Where are you on Buffy? I am on season five. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, Mom just died. It's a giant spoiler. <laughs> I said spoiler alert. <laughs> she doesn't really do anything anyway. It's not, like, important to the gang. Just, you know, emotionally. It's true. But, yep. So, I am on the episode that deals with that. That's one of the best episodes of the whole series. I, so, I hear. So, I will I will finish that eventually. Uh, have I watched... Have I seen more of any, anything else recently? I don't know. Twin Peaks. You still Twin Peaks finish that. Uh, you said you watched more Cheers. I did. Since our last review, I watched another three seasons. Three or four seasons. Um, still great. Holds up. Diane's gone. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, I think on that episode review, you didn't know that was happening. I did not know that was the thing. Actually, I was spoiled because of this. Er, Sorry. Um, 
X Files. Been watching more of that. Still love it. I'm on season six of that. I will probably watch more of that once the new season's coming up again. I'll finish. I'm around like four ish. Let's is- see. I think that's that's all the big ones. A little more Outlander, but not enough to. Where are you, Outlander? Like maybe episode three or four of the second season. So I only did the first season when we did the show. The season two premiere is one of the kind of great what the fucks of TV. Like, yes, that that is true. If you don't know what's going on in that show, like it gives you like, all right, it's been a year. Here's the previously on season one, and then like the next second is just a what the fuck. Like it, it felt like a lost episode. It, was, it really- was very much like a lost episode. Yeah, very flash forwardy and backwardy. Mm-hmm. I'll watch my Islander now. All right, I think that this uh, yeah. rambly. Uh, oh, I oh. did watch a lot more Twenty Four since. I only, I only reviewed, like, one season in, like, three episodes. You gave it five And I gave it five hinges. I have now seen, like, six or seven seasons. I still give it five hinges. Why? Huh. <laughs> it's because it's amazing. So you've watched... Because he fun. doesn't stop. Jack Bauer is awesome because he is the show, and the show is him, and he prevails. But so you're okay with, like, the daughter being chased by a cougar? Yeah. You're okay with the fact that bad guys always have five different plans to go off this day? Well, I mean, you gotta have your plan B, C, D. Yeah. A, to do e. tomorrow. <laughs> well, no, you don't got a lot of time. Jack Bauer's on your case. <laughs> He's gonna get you. You gotta hurry. And he will get you. And he always gets you. So then you have to have two different suicide plans. <laughs> yes. In case your first suicide plan. <laughs> Is cooed, corrupted, corrupted. There's a coup with Even <laughs> Jack Bauer's suicide, plan. suicide plans got fucked up. But Wait, he, he, it's true. Did he have a suicide plan? They he had a couple. They, every season, I think. He, <laughs> yes. he like poisons himself. Yep. He flies that plane with nuclear juice. Oh yeah, that He's was a thing. Crash that one. He's gonna straight up be handed over as the hostage thing for. I, I like when he reported in front of the Senate that he has been torturing everybody all series and then leaves that Senate hearing to go towards more people. <laughs> yep. And then there are no repercussions for any of this. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> and then everyone apparently was watching C SPAN. <laughs> apparently. Um, so, yeah, still gets a five. Did you like how he uh, cut off his uh, son in law's arm? <laughs> when was that? Oh, yeah! What do you mean, when was that? With the axe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Hey, son in law was a great man, Jack. After Drax's own heart. Sure. All right. This has been a uh, silly episode that has. I think. I think we've successfully filled in all the blanks of Thanks. this show at this point. Any. Uh, there's no more plot holes really in our in our show. It's been a pretty ironclad plot of yeah. uh, us being mortal for mm-hmm. centuries. Now we're in a spaceship. Blah blah. Yeah. So we're good. So uh, next week we're going to do a normal episode. We're going to be doing number five nineteen, where we'll be reviewing the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The album Soul Mining by The The. Oh, the children's book is A Child's Christmas in Wales by Dylan Thomas. The food is some sort of fluffy bunny we're not going to eat. Oh, yeah. The song... Is this a song? What number are we doing? We're doing 519. That's right. Uh, uh, this, oh, so yeah, I'm doing Rapper's Delight by Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah, you are. Sounds pretty fun. <laughs> it does. And the TV show is me Pride and Prejudice, which is available on a couple streaming sites. Very beloved miniseries. So take a listen next week. Thank you for this uh, very silly, very uh, flippant I think, bonus episode. Was that fair? Yeah. Very light. Very, very uh, We still on all the blanks. Now all you uh, people out there who just listen for the hinge ratings are all caught up <laughs> exactly. on, all, on everything. There's no more gaps. Yep. All right. Thank you, you patient people. Oh, uh, let's take five to review in the mirror tomorrow. Um, Add episode episode doing Westworld. Leave a comment. Adam's music we bought at songsbaylord.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it. What are, you, what are you doing? There's a spider crawling down your wall. <laughs> I've been watching it go up and down. How is there... Is this a space spider? Yeah. Is this it spiders probably, in space? It probably hijacked, uh, you know, that's uh, a, something on our ship. There's a couple evil spiders in Doctor Who. You guys want me to talk about them on air for a long time? No. Okay, we'll leave them. I'm Austin. I'm Adam. No, Sarah. No, Lee. It's still your name. I'm Pedro. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take a sunrise, sprinkle it with dew, comfort it in chocolate and a miracle or two. It's the Candyman. The Candyman can. Candy.